Mmm, get a tragic here and welcome back to Tabletop Simulator. We're going to be playing a game called Yggwazil, which is an awesome little game. It's one of my fave solo solitaire games. I play this quite a lot. Well, I used to play it quite a lot. I haven't played it a lot in the last few years. But it's basically this, Lord of the Rings and Ghost Stories are my go-to Ah, I've got a bit of time to kill. I'm watching a movie I might have seen before. I might just have a quick game and whatever. This is a great game. So in it, uh, this is the mod I made for Tablet Simulator. And in it, you are basically fighting the Norse gods. Now, I'm going to play with bad counters turned on. Uh, basically, what that does is it automatically counts... So in, the, in each bag is a sort of, what's the word, like a mix, I guess you'd call it, of Vikings and Fire Giants. And depending on how you draw, so I did I drew three, I got two Fire Giants. That was a terrible draw. So this information is, is in the rules as public. Okay, so you can look in the bags at any time while you're playing. So in the mod, I've made a little thing to automatically track it. So if I take a thing out, it automatically changes the value for me. Just to save that. There is an option to play without the bags just to make it more realistic, but whatever. The point is, uh, that's not cheating, so don't tell me it is. Because it's not! <laughs> okay, and I'm going to play Impossible. Yablamo! Now, the reason I'm going to play Impossible is... I basically have not played this game since I played it live on my channel with the physical board game when I bought the second edition, which contained the trance powers, that's all the black powers here, and the extra gods. Now, the thing is, the trance powers are super powerful. I mean, they are strong. So, it kind of... I don't know what the word, I just shuffled that. So it's it kind of, I don't know, it upset me because uh, it made the game a lot easier. And I found out that that was actually the, by design. The the makers of the game wanted it to be more difficult, uh, less difficult as an option for the players. So because of that, I'm now going to be playing with the hardest possible deck just to see how that runs using these trance powers. So we'll just quickly run through how the game works. Basically, here we have Yggdrasil, the world tree, which is freaking amazing. The art in this game is just off the chain. Incidentally, I think they've remade this game recently uh, called Yggdrasil Chronicles or something, but it doesn't look very good to me because it's, it's got like this weird... Like the tree is actually a physical tower on the table with multiple levels, like the Star Trek multi-level chess. Just looks like uh, a pain to set up and play on, but whatever. Anyway, the point is we have Yggdrasil. Now this top level here, this is Asgard, and this is where the crux of the game is played. Each turn, you draw a card from the god deck down here, and it'll move one of these gods this way. Okay? And... Basically, the game ends if too many gods get into Asgard. So this is Asgard here. So you've got these big pillars. You've got this one here, this one here, and this one here. So if more than five gods get past the gates of Asgard, you can see the gate down there, it's game over. Here, you only need three gods to get to the stairs to the hall of Asgard right and then here you already see how it says one you only need one god to get into the into asgard itself into the halls of asgard for it to be game over so basically what this game is doing is you're trying to retard the god's progress each god is trying to you know make his way across so a good a good sort of uh, what's the word uh, analogy I guess you could say is because this is an old game is the original Reiner Knizia I think it was Lord of the Rings game because in, in Lord of the Rings you you travel from left to right across this map 
and the game rules try to retard your progress. So this has sort of flipped it around. So the the evil presence of the board is constantly moving this direction and we have to push it back. So every time we do a combat, right, if we win a combat, it just pushes him back a, a thing. And it's the we've got to play until this deck runs out. That's the timer. And that's pretty much the major crux of the game is just keeping an eye on this. There's a lot of other information here. This, these numbers here are the combat value for the pugs. So if Fenra is here, he's five to kill. If he's here, he's seven to kill. The little lightning bolts are the power. So if he's here, he's actually three power. If he's here, he's two power. If he's here, he's one power. And that affects how each of these gods have their own ability that triggers when they activate. And the power level determines how bad that is. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So on your turn as a player, you have three actions you can do. You can fight, okay? So you can choose to either fight a god, which I sort of talked about, or you can fight an ice giant down here, or you can visit the various other worlds. We have the uh, realm of fire down here. We have the land of the dead down here where we can get new Viking souls. We have a sort of trading area where we can trade. I'm sorry, I don't know all the names. Here we have Midgard, and you can have these Valkyries will fly around and pick souls out of Midgard and carry them up to Valhalla for us, right? And that's how we get more Vikings to fight in Asgard. Uh, we have the Ice Giant Citadel or whatever, and that's where we've got to fight the Ice Giants. We have the Dwarven Forge, where we can get super weapons. And up here, we have the Land of the Elves, who help us in combat. And over here, we have... I can't remember what this place is called. Uh, the Sacred Lands, whatever that means. Which uh, is, is a track that you can activate. And so, you get three actions on your turn. And the idea is to build up your power and do combat. And that's pretty much the whole game. Each god has their own powers. So we'll just quickly have a look at the powers and then we'll get started in our first game. So we have uh, Tyre. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just gonna forget about complaining, you know, apologizing for pronouncing all these names wrong. I'm uh, an Australian as in you know, there is no <laughs> way I can pronounce weird Norse names. Okay, so his power is anytime he rolls a dice, he may roll a second time and choose the result he wishes to apply. It's that simple. Okay, that's his power. But he also has a trance ability. Okay, so when, as an action for your turn, you can flick into trance. And what this does, it applies your power trance power to every other god it becomes a global power and his trance power is when fighting the gods you may discard vikings after they roll instead of before it okay because basically when you do a combat roll you roll the dice okay and it just rolls okay so i've rolled one axe so that's a power of one okay every viking that you play from your hand is worth one point and every elf is played is worth one point. But the difference is elves you can play after you roll and Vikings you have to play before. So basically you, you want to have two elves in your hand and then you can roll and if you need one you can spend an elf. But this guy's trance power allows you to treat all pugs including vikings as if they were elves you can you can apply the effect after you roll so you can see if you've beaten them before you spend them it's pretty strong okay so here we have freya freya's power is that she can perform two actions at the same location on the world tree in the same turn everyone else is limited to one action per location and her trance power is actually quite interesting while she's in trance half of all the spent vikings end up on her board so it's because she's like the queen of the valkyries i guess so she gets all the viking souls or some of them anyway very very strong so she's basically going to go on uh, uh ice giant duty 
Okay, Jord or whatever. His ability is that when he draws from the bags, he draws just Vikings. So normally when you draw from a bag, like say you're going to draw from this green bag, you go one, two, three. Okay, I drew nothing but ogres, so it was a wasted turn. I didn't get any Vikings. You know, so, so I do it again. One, two, three. I got two Vikings that time. But because of his ability, I can just go into the bag and choose the Vikings like that. So he always has strong turns, which also makes him a very good Ogre Slayer. And his special ability is that the gods ignore the position of the Valkyries at the end of their movement and can draw from any bag. So basically, one of the actions is you access Midgar and the Valkyries move one spot and then you can access the bag that they're over. Now... You can see that the proportions of the bag, see the white bag, has got 12 ogres and only six Vikings, but the black bag has three uh, ogres and uh, 15 Vikings. So you want to get, what you basically want to end up is sort of here. At the same time, there's things that can like drown these islands. So if I move here, I won't be able to access this guy at all. And you can even turn into a storm where they can't fly past. But the point is, his power means that you can move the Valkyrie, but draw from anywhere. It's very strong. Okay, now we have Frigg. Now, Frigg is a ridiculously powerful god. His ability is when he does the draw from the bag, like say I draw three from here, one, two, three. Instead of the ogres going back into the bag, they get discarded down to the land of fire. So just his normal action allows you to, uh, you know, adjust the odds of the bag. But his trance power is even more powerful. Basically, every time you activate the fire giant uh, area, so if you access fire giants, you draw five from the bag. One, two, three, four, five. You put the Vikings back. And the fire giants go into here and are out of bag. And that's how you adjust the, the odds of the bag. So his power is that you just draw five giants straight up and that's it. So very strong. Okay, Thor, he's very simple. He just has plus one attack at all times. And if you flip him into trance, uh, the ogres, are their power is reduced by one. So that's very good. And Hemrodol is also a good guy. He's basically, unlike the other guys, he gets to draw four in an action rather than three. And his other power is that all the other gods have this power. That means, so that draw four goes to everyone in the game. Which is very, combos very well with Frigg actually. That's pretty interesting. Okay, and that's pretty much the way it goes. So I'm going to save this. How do I save? Boom. And uh, I will see you guys next time.